On today's video, we take a journey to the guitar store that started it all for me and say goodbye for one last time. Do I need to hold this cane? If you want to look cool. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> help, Mary, help. <laughs> Are you no video? I'm kidnapping him. Hey there, kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. I think a lot of you guys watching this video will always remember your first guitar store, whether it be the place that you got your first instrument, or started taking your first lessons, or even met the people that would eventually form a band with you someday. For me, that store was one Lloyd's Music in Morristown, Tennessee, which after serving musicians in our community for decades now, has finally decided to close its doors. That little shop has meant so much to me as a musician and just as a person in general, and I know it has for a whole lot of other people too. So on today's video, I'm just gonna take you guys on a little stroll down memory lane and go down to the shop one last time to talk to the man himself, Phil Lloyd, who started the business many years ago, and get some ideas about the music business and what it was like to have such an important part of our community for so long. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Guitars. Sign up today, even for just a buck a month, you're gonna get access to a ton of backing tracks, bonus lessons, downloadable tabs, and so much more. Thanks. Okay, let's talk a little bit of background here because I think in order to understand how important this place was to me and so many other people, you gotta understand a little bit about the time and the place. Now, I grew up in the Morristown, Tennessee area, and Morristown isn't really known for much anything other than it's where they filmed the original Evil Dead, which is a pretty freaking cool claim to fame. I started playing guitar in the late 90s, when I was about 16 years old, and what you have to remember is that this was before the internet you know, ruled the world. So the thing about that time period is, is if you wanted to get a piece of gear, if you wanted to meet a local musician, if you wanted to try something out or get lessons or whatever, you had to go to your local mom and pop music store. And Lloyd's wasn't just a place where I bought gear and learned how to play guitar. It's where I made a lot of eventually lifelong musical connections with some of my friends that I go on to play in bands with or teach with or whatever. There's so many things in my musical past that are linked to this shop. All right, guys, on my way to Lloyd's Music for the very last time, my last time at my first guitar shop. Kind of an emotional moment. Now we're getting into the bustling metropolis that I used to call home, the place I grew up in, majestic, regal, Talbot, Tennessee, where there is uh, not a lot, honestly. <laughs> That little pharmacy right there used to be a Pizza Plus that I worked at delivering pizzas. Anybody that uh, knows me knows that I was born without a sense of direction, so the thought of me delivering pizzas pre-GPS era, pretty hilarious, but somehow I pulled it off and made it work. There's the old McDonald's. That was a big deal when we got a McDonald's here in town because it's on the way to Lloyd's. Maybe you can get yourself a Coke over there before your guitar lesson, then you're having a pretty big old day, I tell you what. Now, as we just keep going straight right here, now we're gonna be pulling up. I see the sign right here, guys. Way off in the distance, Lloyd's Music Mart. The music store that birthed me. My first music store ever. Woo! Now, to give you guys a little bit more of an in-depth idea about the origins of the store and what it was like, I'd like to introduce you guys to the man himself, Mr. Phil Lloyd. This store is like, his life's work. Check it out, man. This is some really, really cool stuff. I was very happy to have a conversation with Phil about the history of this awesome shop. Hey, Ben, how you doing? <laughs> I'm sitting here with the man himself, Mr. Phil Lloyd. How are you doing today, Phil? I'm good. I'm really good, Yeah, Thank you. It's good to see you. Same here. It's been a minute since I've been down this way, but I'm glad that I made it in. One more time before you closed up shop course. The walls are looking a little bare. We don't have quite as many guitars and amps and stuff around as we did when I was coming down here taking lessons as a little nerdy kid with a bowl cut, right? Yep. You knew me back when I was just a nerd, not just a nerd on the internet. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, Phil, I want to know, because this is one of those things, I've known you for 20 years yeah. now, right? Ever since I started playing music, because yeah. as soon as I started playing guitar, I came down here and started taking guitar lessons from our friend Ben Franklin, of course, who taught me a lot, but I also learned a lot from you because I'd come out of lessons and I'd hear you doing some really cool, like Chet Atkins style finger picking on acoustic and stuff. I didn't know you were doing that. <laughs> I was just listening, just yeah. getting an earful, you know? Yeah. Was guitar your first instrument? 
Yes. It was? Yeah. When did you start playing? In seventh grade. Seventh grade. Yeah. Daddy had a, a guitar and a, a, an arch top. Mm hmm Strings about that high. <laughs> nice and easy and to play on. And I would on. just strum and play. Yeah. And then I, then I got to some handbooks, and I'd look at you know, the little diagrams of the chords and stuff, and that's where I taught myself to hear the chord changes. Really? Yeah. So you're just going by ear? By ear, yeah. I but play by smell. You do? I do. <laughs> okay, Sniff my way through that's it. That's the reason know? he's so good. <laughs> well, Daddy was a Methodist preacher, so we moved to uh, Morristown. And I kept saying, you remember this, these magazines where they have the songs in them all the time? And I kept saying these, they had Chet Atkins, Chet Atkins, Chet Atkins. Who in the world is Chet Atkins? Yeah. I'd never heard him before. Wow. And this is 19 and what year? 19. We moved up here in 1958. 58, yeah. okay. So anyway, so I go down to Stubblefield's pawn shop, uh -huh. okay, it wasn't a music store yet. Okay. And uh, I ordered a, a record, a 45, by Chet Atkins. I never heard him. You just heard that he was a big deal, so you yeah, need to check him out. Deal. So it finally come in, and we lived three and a half miles from town to Mullins Hill. Mm -hmm. That's where we lived. I couldn't wait to get home. I put that thing on the, on the phonograph. It was Tagger Rag uh -huh. by Chet and I, no, that's, that's impossible. Not real. Yeah. Uh, nobody can play like that. Yeah. But he did. He, it probably sounded like it was two or three guitars at yes, the same time. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's Chet Atkins. And so every, I got, that hooked me. Wow. Ever since then, I got hooked on Chet Atkins. But of course, it wasn't just me that benefited from having Lloyds around back in the day. I think like every single musician that I know from the Morristown, Jefferson City, even like Johnson City area, shopped at Lloyd's, took lessons there, traded in a piece of gear, bought a piece of gear, something with this place. It was just like the central hub of the entire music scene in that area. But I think you'll be better off hearing it from them than me. So I reached out to a lot of the local musicians that I knew from the area and asked them to contribute a little short video here about what Lloyd's meant to them. Let's check out a few of them. Phil, what an absolute legend you are. You've helped myself and so many other people in the Lakeway area for years, very selflessly, and always with a story to tell. <laughs> um, my favorite story of you is I walked in one day and you had a Marshall 1967 cab and I needed a stereo cab and I only had the cheaper MG cab and I asked you, would you uh, let me trade and pay you some money for that cab? And you said, no. For a second, I was heartbroken. And then you said, but I'll trade you straight up. Where is it? And I have, I have, and will never forget that. Um, thank you so much for all your years, uh, to all the local musicians. And I wish you the best. Hey, Phil Lloyd, this is your old buddy. I'm just want to commend you on a job. Well done with your store. Many years. First time in the studio was with you, my friend. Thank you very much. Come see me, I put you to work. Hey Lloyd, just want to say thank you for having a great guitar store when I was a kid growing up. Uh, me and my friends used to come by and try out different guitars and amps, and I even took guitar lessons there from Ben Franklin growing up. And I actually got my favorite guitar I've ever owned from you. And I've even still got the sticker on the back. So thank you again. You've done a great service for Morristown, and we're going to miss you. Hey, what's up? This is Ryan. Um, I'm just going to say thanks, Phil Lloyd, for being there through the years for all us uh, musicians growing up around Morristown and Jefferson City area. I bought several guitars, keyboards, all kinds of tiddlywinks and stuff down there at Lloyd's. Uh, I can even remember going down there and posting on the cork board trying to find musicians to play with when I was in my teens before, you know, social media but yeah i just want to say thanks uh for all of you done for the music scene around here uh, and you'll be greatly missed so after you'd played that you also got into playing piano and stuff too right because yeah. you're renowned as like for forever now as being like the guy you call when you need your piano tune and yeah. stuff and you're actually the one that taught me how to get a guitar really in tune as well really 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 because i remember you taught me a long time ago because I think I was over here struggling, trying to get my guitar or something in tune before a lesson. And you taught me to listen for the beats. Don't listen for the notes, but listen to those harmonic beats that are going on. And when they're slowing down, that's when it's getting in tune. Oh, you're on tuning. Yeah. 
Yeah. When, it's, when they're not beaten at all, that's when it's in tune. You that's how about. I got in this mess. It was a panic <laughs> thing. That's how the mess all started. Yeah. You've heard of co-op? Uh-huh. I was a co-op student. Okay. So for two years at Lynn Shelley's, it wasn't, wasn't Carlisle's back then. It's called Lynn Carlisle's Shelley's. music, yeah. And uh, Oscar Bell from New York was my teacher. He taught me how to rebuild pianos mm -hmm. and how to tune. Oh. And uh, so I've tuned pianos for Ronnie Millsaps, Con Hunley. Wow. Jerry Lee Lewis. These are some name brand players right yeah, here. Yeah, and then uh, Ray Charles, I tuned a pen for him. Yeah, You're kidding. I, yeah, I did. That's amazing. I yeah. didn't know that. You didn't, yeah, I don't tell nobody. Well. <laughs> but, uh, tell back now. Yeah. That's too cool, man. Yeah. That is too and, cool. Uh, but anyway, I worked myself through college. I only worked one day a week. I made enough money. How do you do that? Well, piano tuners, they're, they're not cheap. That's where the money is, kids. Get off of YouTube and learn how to tune so, a piano. So, yeah, so uh, I work one day a week at, at, in Knoxville. Yeah. And work, paid every penny of my college, every penny of it, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's something else. Like I say, that's how I got in this mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I mentioned before, I don't think that I would have even started playing guitar if not for my older brother. Noah. So I told him I was coming down and he met me down at the shop for a little interview footage down here in the studio. So here's me and my brother Noah talking about Lloyd's. Now I'm sitting down here in the Lloyd's studio underneath the shop here with the best big brother I ever had. Who's this? Hi there kids. It's your good buddy. <laughs> Uncle Ben's older brother and favorite brother. <laughs> Best one. Learned everything I knew from you, didn't I? <laughs> when did you start haunting Lloyd's music? That was circa 19 to 90 what? 15, 15, 16, 96, yeah. 90, 97. We old. What happened? Yes. When did we get old? Like a fine wine. Ugh. So you started coming down to here when you started playing guitar before I did. You played guitar for, what, two years, mm -hmm. three years before mm -hmm. I started? Mm-hmm. You came down here, you took lessons from our man, Benjamin Franklin, got me introduced to him. You learned the ways and we learned how to irritate old Phil Lloyd you were pretty one, well. But you were the one that was a hoot to take around to Guitar Center and Will's Music and East Town Mall. Will's Music, yeah. Precious little straight hair. Bull cut. Bashful little <laughs> boy that wouldn't talk. I'll I'm, pick some though. Golly. <laughs> now you're telling so my secrets. <laughs> it was so much fun. But we had fun irritating uh, old Phil Lloyd. Phil mm -hmm. had special names just for me and my brother. He called you... I'm Bar Chord. Bar Chord, and I was known as Power Chord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we've had some good old times here at Lloyd's time. Music. Good times. You got all the dirt you can tell these people there about go. what a bunch of annoying geeks, me and my brother, were old Power Chord and Bar Chord yeah. down here bugging you all the time, right? I never will forget how I learned that, though. I was getting on a plane <laughs> in Los Angeles. Yeah. And it's filled full of musicians. For the NAMM show. At the NAMM show. Yeah, yeah. At Anaheim. Yep. And uh, so uh, one of the musicians saw one of his friends and says, Hey there, Bar Accord. <laughs> and I thought, I can't wait to get home. Yeah, yeah. So I give you and your brother the names. It's you know. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Phil. Thank you so much for years and years of guitars and strings and amps and everything i might need musically and uh thank you most of all for all the times that we've shared being friends you're one of the best man i don't know who in the world to fill your shoes now but here's to life after the store and uh look forward to a lot more before social media before the facebooks and the twitters and the whatnot in the back of phil lloyd's place there was a door that led downstairs to the studio that had all the people looking for bands, the guitarists, the singers and stuff looking for somebody. And that's how you made your connections back in the day, was to go up and pull a little tab off, go home, maybe call somebody, see if they're into what you're into. And I'm sure he didn't even realize it, but the amount of opportunities and, and people he brought together just by hanging some stuff on an old brown door in the back of the uh, shop. old cork board, man. That old door leading down the studio. My first studio experience ever was at Phil Lloyd's. My first new drum set was bought at Phil Lloyd's. And I think I walked up to the to the cash register to check out or something. And he took the sticks, looked at them, and was like, I need, I need somebody to put together a drum set for me. Uh, how about you put that together and you can have those. And, and trusted my skinny little butt to go over there and 
build his new drum set to sell and stuff and gave me a set of sticks. Did that a couple times. Precious Phil Lloyd, man. Love him. Hope he realizes the influence that he had on the local scene in a little rural Tennessee where there wasn't a lot going on. It was a gathering place. Uh, always encouraging. Love you, Phil. Phil Lloyd, what's up, man? Hey, Brad Bolin, just want to say thank you for all the wonderful years, man, and uh, congratulations on your retirement. Um, man, you deserve to lay back and uh, take it easy. Um, you've more than earned it, actually. I uh, remember I got my first guitar and amp from your store. Um, I think I was 12. I'm 42 years old now, so it's been a minute. But, uh, man, nothing but love from you, nothing but love from your uh, store. I have so many experiences, so many stories uh, that I don't actually think my phone memory would hold all of them. Again, thank you so much uh, for being being there for all of us and um, just kicking ass, man. Hey, God bless you and I'll see you soon. Thanks, Lloyd. Hey, Phil, I want to say thanks for uh, everything. There's a lot of people my age that wouldn't have got to play music if it wasn't for you. And uh, you really helped me make a whole lot of friends because of this. I really appreciate everything you did, sincerely. So when did you open this shop up? Because this is one of those things, Phil, where January like January the 3rd, 1973. 73? Yeah, I built a little display room at my house in the basement. Laid down the carpet, just oh. like you're doing your own thing. Yeah. I did my own thing. And I ran ads in the classifieds. And that's how I sold them. And huh. then, so I got to thinking, I said, well, you know, I think I go out on the highway. So it's right down here, and they built a store, and it, I, I started out there as a piano and organ store. Really? Yeah. And I thought this was always the only place that you no, ever had a shop. I was there 15 years. And then uh, uh, I sold uh, uh, Thomas organs, Hammond organs, and uh, what's the other organ? Wurlitzer. Wurlitzer, yeah, yeah Wurlitzer, so yeah. And then I had Wurlitzer pianos. And uh, every weekend on Friday, Saturday, Tom Shoup was there. Uh huh, yeah. And uh, even on Sunday, forgive me for working on Sunday, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but, well, you know, country boys got to eat. You there know. you go. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I did that for about four years. Uh huh. And I sold a lot of, a lot of units that way. Then people quit buying organs. I went, uh oh. Uh oh. I'm in trouble. Yeah. So that's when I started picking up guitars. Picked up a, a Baldwin, Baldwin had a piano, an electric piano. Uh, let's see, Martin took on with Martin. Uh -huh. Has Yamaha guitars. It's just one thing led to another, you know. Wow. And, and then, then people quit buying pianos. Mm -hmm. You know, they buy the electric pianos. <laughs> yep, yep. So, uh, so that's when I decided, you know, to take on Ibanez, you know, with all the different ones. Yeah, so if I grew up with. Yeah. Yeah. And had at that point had you moved into this shop right here? Okay, I came down here in 1986. I was two years old. No. I was two years old. No. Yeah. That's why I always thought that this is the only shop is because my whole life, yeah. this no. has been here. This has been here my whole life, Phil. Yeah. No, it was, no, I started out as a piano store, and now I've been in business 49 years. 49 years. I tried years. to make it 50. Yeah? But... Uh, <laughs> Next time. Next time. Kenny Rogers says there's a time to hold them and a time to fold them. And a time to what? Walk away? <laughs> so I Who's, decided to walk away. Who are we to argue with the gambler himself after I'm going to go to Tootsie's down in Niceville. Yeah, you? there you go. <laughs> Soak it in, man. I like it. Yeah. yeah, this place has been here forever, and I, I seriously don't know any musician that hasn't bought something here, took a lesson here, hung out here, got strings, got picks. Like this place has seriously just been such a foundation for all of us around here. And that's something that I think, especially maybe a lot of younger people watching this might not understand is like, I started playing guitar in the late nineties. This is before everybody had the internet. For me and my brother and our friends, this was it. This yep. was the only shop. Yep. We had the, the trade center out there, which was kind of a pawn shop that had some yep. guitars. Yep. And there's Pick and Grin for just a minute, but that was too far out. Yeah. So for us, there was Lloyd's Music. So this is where you would go. Yeah. And that's something that I think a lot of people might even miss out on because coming down here and buying a guitar, buying an amp, or taking guitar lessons or whatever, this is where I'd hear somebody really cool picking over in the corner 
playing something I thought sounded cool, so I'd go over and talk to them, and then maybe end up in a band with them or whatever. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? A lot of connections are made, made here. Absolutely so. Yeah. And you can't get that when you're just clicking purchase and well, it shows up on your doorstep. Two weeks ago, you know Stanley Lemons. Uh huh. And uh, help me out. I'm having a, hey, I'm having a senior citizen <laughs> moment. And, uh, anyway, both of them are great guitarists. Yeah. And sit right over there. I didn't say a word. They both picked up guitars, and for 45 minutes, I was in heaven. Yeah. Those two guys were playing the guitars with each other. Fair it was awesome. It's awesome. And that's something you don't get unless you're going to your mom and pop place. Exactly. In exactly. your town. You don't and get that at Sweetwater. I think you have to. Wait, wait a minute. I love Sweetwater. Me too. Yeah, I do. I really do. <laughs> About everything I got in my studio downstairs came from Sweetwater. So there you go. That, okay. But even just the experience of just coming down here and, and taking guitar lessons, whether it be down in the studio or sometimes I took lessons over here in the closet a few times. Yeah. And it was just such a great learning experience. And like I said, just getting to hear, to hear you play and hearing Ben play and all the other guys around here, it's like that taught me as much as lessons itself. Good. I definitely remember too, like I would have my guitar lesson with Ben and then I'd tell my mom or my dad like, wait about an hour afterwards to pick me up just because I just wanted to hang out, you know? This is my social experience. Good. <laughs> hey everybody, this is uh, Jacob from Morristown, Tennessee. Just uh, saying my piece about Phil Lloyd's music, Mark. So many memories over the years. Um, as a kid, my first Les Paul was a gold top in the 90s. First time I ever saw a Gibson Les Paul in person. Um, my first drum set came from there for for Christmas one year as a Slingerland. My first time in the in the recording studio, a real recording studio. Phil's music mart has meant a lot to me over the years for sure. The community talking with Phil, going in there and listening to stories about guitars or people he has run into over the years. Uh, uh, he's, he's a big NASCAR fan, which I know we could talk for hours about too. I just want to tell Phil, I appreciate all the things you've done in the community that have gone unnoticed. You've touched so many people's lives in more ways than you'll probably ever know. There's so many great musicians that have come through there that are making a living. Uh, and just uh, weekend warriors like me, just having fun when we get an opportunity to go play. Uh, just from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Uh, there'll be a lot of out of tune pianos uh, around the Morristown area. Over the, until we get somebody that can come back in and learn. But Phil, I love you, brother. I wish you the best in your life's journey. Thank you for all the good memories. Thank you for keeping up. And, and to the next generation of guys out here, we got to get with these kids and teach them. Play every day. You know, St. Eddie said it the best. You yeah, play every day. Play every day. Thank you, guys. Lloyd's music. Oh, my goodness. I have so much great memories from there. I uh, still remember being a uh, kid running around that place making all the uh, new music equipment look used from uh, sitting around and playing with it. have a lot of great memories of Phil, just uh, how much I uh, learned in music, but not just music, but in business. I'll never forget the uh, first task getting assigned with him uh, putting together drum kits, and I'm building all these drum kits just like you would uh, set them up to play, and he'd be like, no, no, you've got to like stretch it out and make all these colors look good and make them flail and look beautiful. You know, I learned a lot through that. Uh, I definitely learned a lot about business and the foundations and how that runs. And, you know, fast forward 25 years later, and I'm running, you know, tens of million of dollars of stores uh, across the board for several companies. And I still tell that story uh, about uh, first experience in putting together drum kits and uh, laying those pieces out and uh, making it look appealing and just kind of the first dabble in visual merchandising. Uh, so a lot of great memories with that all the way across the board. A lot of applications I was able to put on later in life and enjoy a great career with. Thanks for all the memories and uh, wish you the best, Phil. Thanks. So when I first moved to Morristown, um, the first thing I was doing was looking for a music store and Lloyd's Music was right down the road from where I had moved. And I started going in there and hanging out and I got to know Phil really well. He was so gracious to let me hang out in there. Um, I had my first studio experience there. Um, bought my first really great Gibson Les Paul there. Uh, Phil, I hope you're doing well and I wish you the best, man. Hey Lloyd, this is Eddie Self and I just wanted to reach out and say thank you for giving people in this area a place to buy instruments and a place to record. Uh, the very first drum set I ever bought was from Lloyd's. The very first recording experience I ever had at a legit studio was at Lloyd's. And Lloyd was always funny, uh, encouraging, and just thanks for being there for everybody in this area. See you, Lloyd. Hey, Phil. I just want to say to you, Phil, that uh, 
we appreciate you, all us kids. And I mean kids because we were all kids when we started coming up there to your store, to your shop. And uh, I just want to say thank you for being such a sweetheart to us and always giving us a good deal and uh, for putting up with us because I'm pretty sure Smoke on the Water might have been played once or twice. <laughs> anyway, man, we love you. Uh, be good and enjoy your retirement, man. See you later. It was really interesting and surreal to go into that shop. The place that was my musical origin story and see all the shelves empty, you know, where I was used to seeing these glass display cases of pedals and picks and walls full of like beautiful Ibanez guitars and stuff. It was really weird just to see it empty. It really did remind me of like whenever you're, you know, moving from a house you've lived in for a long time and you just look at it without the furniture and pictures on the walls and stuff and everything just looks so bare. It's almost like you've never seen the place before. It was really a sensation just like that whenever I walked in and saw everything all emptied out. So, especially people that watch my channel for a while know that I, I love the Ibanez guitars. And thinking back on it, I started playing Ibanez guitars because my brother had an Ibanez EX series that he bought here. And so Ibanez was just kind of already around here and that's why I started playing and I love those guitars. What made you start carrying that brand in particular? There was a guy he had a guitar, and it was an Ibanez. I'd never heard the name before. Ricky Bird. He had an Ibanez, and I, but it was expensive back then when I first saw it. I went to the trade show, and they had a the display going on. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it, and I said, oh, my gosh. I fell in love with Ibanez. Then yeah. I found out all the people that played them. Yeah, sure. Steve Vai. Satriani. Oh, uh, my heroes, man. Yeah. My idols. So, uh... I took on Ibanez. Yeah. And it's been a good good decision. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. Yeah. Remember I got my very first Ibanez RG four seventy here. You the got metallic a 470? it was the copper one. You remember my, my dad got yeah. it for me and he kept it a secret like all summer. I got it for Christmas. But I think like everybody around here grew up with some kind of an Ibanez guitar they got here and a crate amplifier. Oh yeah. Crate. That yeah. was like the brand that we all had around here. It like to kill me when they quit selling those things, so, you know. Well, obviously you sold a lot of them, because like I said, I a lot. everybody around here. I had a, sold a lot. And you had Marshall and stuff down here, too. Yeah, I remember Marshall's some of the, a good, Marshall's oh, a good yeah, killer. Oh, always, always. I remember the first Marshall amps I played were from down here. Oh, yeah. I sold Gibson, too. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Back when you could get a Les Paul for how much? Not much. Eight ninety five. Ten ninety five. <laughs> How now, the times have changed, huh? Yeah, now you better own a farm. <laughs> <laughs> now you gotta be a piano tuner. <laughs> That's where the bucks are at. Yeah. I think the first amp that I got from there was a crate was it the GFX two twelve? It was one that had like the DSP, the built in effects and stuff. I kinda think I should like go on reverb and buy one again and like listen to it and see what it's like and see if I can make it, you know, sound cool or whatever. Let me know if you guys think that'd be a fun idea. But that's definitely where I got my first amp. And then I started trading that in on other stuff too. Um, for a really long time on my channel, you guys saw that ancient Line 6 AX212. Uh, usually not being used, just sitting in the background with my keyboard on it and some of my older videos. I got that at Lloyd's. I traded the crate in for that. And I used that for years, man. I gigged that amp live. I recorded with that amp. Uh, it Honestly, it, it really doesn't sound good. But it's all that I had for so long, you know? Big thanks to Phil Lloyd at Lloyd's Music Mart. Thank you for a lifetime of supplying us all with great musical instruments. The greatest guitar I've ever owned. Thanks, Phil. We love you. Gosh, Lloyd's was such a cool and important place growing up uh, in Morristown. Um, whether it was me and my brother and my friends going in and looking at and playing at instruments that we'd never be able to afford, or just buying a set of strings, um, Lloyd's Music Mart was always a welcoming and encouraging place, which is what you want when you're a young kid growing up learning about music. I first met Phil Lloyd in 1992. That was the beginning of a friendship that's lasted for 30 years and is still going strong to this day. Phil, you've had such a positive influence on not only my life, but uh, the lives of so many musicians in this area for years. And, um, and that can never be overstated. But I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I love you and thank you so very much. Back when I first started playing guitar and was still petrified to play in front of anyone, I decided to go 
into a local music store for the first time ever alone. And I went into Lloyd's Music because I'd heard from some friends that he always had just amazing acoustic guitars. And of course, you know, you get the musician's friend catalogs. You want to see how D28 really sounds. So I go in, pick one up, strum around very quietly in the corner. And then eventually, uh, I think Phil must have sensed that I was nervous. He came up and was just very complimentary and telling me that, you know, he wished he could play like that, you know which is, if you've ever heard Phil play, you know he's awesome at playing guitar and anything. He's he's great at piano. But I think he just could sense how nervous I was, you know, and wanted to uh, give me a little boost, give me a little confidence, you know. And uh, I just thought that was amazing. Hey, Phil, Ricky Moore here. Just want to say, hey, thanks for 35 years of service to the music community. Thanks for 35 years of friendship. Thanks for all the great memories. The girls and I are going to miss coming in the shop and talking to you and seeing you. We love you. Hey, hey, Daniel Kimbrough here. Just wanted to say a few words about Phil Lloyd and his wonderful music store. A special place in my heart for sure. My parents and I had a family bluegrass band and our first record uh, was made downstairs in the recording studio. And uh, get home from, from high school and try to do some homework or something. And then later in the evening, we'd run down to Phil Lloyd's and sneak downstairs and had the place all to ourselves. And I would go upstairs and play a lot of guitars, you know, while vocal takes or whatever were happening. And years before that, we had a, a cover band in Morristown with some other friends. And uh, I remember we went downstairs and uh, recorded some Van Halen tunes. <laughs> And that was my first ever recording session. One day in particular, I was upstairs noodling around. I think it was a Saturday. I was playing on a guitar and I think I was just trying to, you know, playing some E minor and Phil came over to me and he said, you ever heard this E minor chord? And my mind was blown. And my love of dissonant harmony persists to this day. Phil always had time for the younger folks that came through the door and uh, he always had time for me, and I'll always be grateful. What kind of trends do you see coming next for the music world? Considering you've sold musical instruments and supplies for as long as you have, where do you think the market is going towards next? I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's hard to say, right? You know, it's, it, a lot of people buying things online, which is okay. Yeah. But if you're going to buy a guitar, you need to play it. Yeah. A lot of memories here, I know that. Yeah, yeah, a whole lot of memories here, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, you've spent a lot of your life yeah. right here in this shop helping the musical culture of the local community, dude. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I can't even tell you how many bands that I know and that I've played in that started because we all got our instruments and our lessons right here in this shop, you know? A whole lot of us learned a lot and met each other. That makes me feel good. I'm glad that it does, man. Now, another dude that I met in the Morristown music scene that has been a great friend of mine, I've shared the stage with Phil Sanifer so many times I can't even count it. He is just one of my favorite people ever. I told Phil I was gonna be down at Lloyd's one more time and he met me down there because this shop also means a ton for him and it's where he got a lot of his first breaks in the world of making a living off of music too. But I think it's better if you hear the tale from the man himself. So here's my good buddy, Philip Sanifer. All right, guys, I'm sitting here in the control room of the studio at Lloyd's Music here with the man, the certified Amen. hunk. <laughs> My vibrato role model, guys. Oh. I've talked about this guy on the channel a few oh, times. No. It's my good friend Phil Sanifer from right here in town. Uh, we've known each other a really long time. Oh, wow. we, we met in a guitar shop. Yeah. We taught together for a very long time at it was the fret store, then the guitar vault yeah. in Morristown. We played in a fun time rock and roll band called Killer. Far Far Away. Killer band. Uh, there's somebody that looked really similar to you one time that got up on stage with Skank Banger and played a couple shows. Oh man, I've gotten mistaken for that guy. Yeah, I mean he's handsome. Buster. Handsome. Oh, hey, look, I can only hope. <laughs> you know. And you've got a lot of history with this here establishment here at Lloyd. Oh, big time. You've known this place longer than I have. Oh, yeah, man. When I was just a pup, I think I was a junior in high school, my mom would dump me off here, and God bless Phil's heart, you know. Best babysitter you ever ba had. Yeah, just babysitter, man, watching me. So I'm, I'm hanging out at the, uh, at, at the shop just playing guitars I couldn't afford, like I always, you know. Phil comes up the steps. Uh, mad as hell, you know, just <laughs> fighting uh, mad. Uh, yeah, a rare sight. His current guitar teacher had been 
downstairs in the studio where we are now stealing his magnetic tape. His Pilfering tape. Yeah, his real, real tape. Big $200 reels of, you know, tape. $200 in 80s money. Yeah, man. Woo. Phil's going off, you know. He, he thinks, I'm so rich, I don't know how much tape I got. Da, 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 da. He's just going off. And he just whirls around, and he's like, Hell, Philip, you're pretty good. Why don't you teach guitar? And, <laughs> this is after your mom uh, dropped you off. Yeah, I'm sitting there. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just sitting there and playing <laughs> guitar. And he comes up. I said, Phil, man, I don't know the first thing yeah. about teaching guitar. And he said, here's, here's how you charge them. Here's how you block your lessons. You, you teach them something on the guitar, you get them hot for a guitar, they come upstairs and I sell them one. That's the pitch. He said, that's the hustle. <laughs> that's you the know, hustle. <laughs> that's the hustle. And you're like, I and, could probably do that. Yeah, and, uh, and I was like, okay. Then you drop something like, you talk about hitting the ground running, dropped like 40 students in my lap. Oh my God. Or something like that. It was crazy. Trial by fire. Yeah, man. And you, you even know. cut your band's first demos and stuff back yeah. in the day, yeah. right here, right? Yeah, knew nothing. And Phil just... And you know, God bless him, man. He just let us have the run of the place. Wow. He would leave me and uh, uh, my friend Jamie down here, leave us to, you know, to our own devices. Explore just, the just, studio just space. Let us, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He would just let us loose. So you taught a bunch of lessons down here. Yeah. You made some records down here. Yeah. You've got a lot of yeah, me good man. memories tied up in yeah, this place. Dude, huh? we, we, me and Phil were like that. I just love him to death, man. You stepped out earlier and uh, I was talking with Phil and I told him, I said, man, I said, I don't think you realize the gravity of uh, how many young people, man, have yeah. come through this. I really don't think he knows. If you count all the kids, dude, that Phil Lloyd has, you know, inspired, you know, uh, 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 to, to play music and, and helped and... Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, then he's got more kids than George Foreman. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, for me, man, he was just always there. Like I said, I was a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, hey, why don't you teach? You know, I mean, who heard he was, of willing, he was willing to go to you bat know, for you and yeah, be like, man, let's well, give you a shot. I can, I, can, cool. I can say this with complete confidence, man. The two people who were directly most supportive of my music and me being a musician yeah. were my mom and Phil Lloyd. Any time an opportunity come down the pike or something like that, and I was a little nervous about it, Phil be there with a, oh, hell, you're good enough. You're a better picker than they are. Yeah. Go do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the first time I ever set foot on a stage, Phil was out there running sound. Voice of support. So he, yeah. He, wow. He, he's, he's, as, he's as sweet as peach. <laughs> it's uh, immeasurable. You know what he what he's done, man. So I'm with you. It's like I never would have picked up a guitar if there wasn't anywhere to pick up a guitar at. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So owe it all to this place. Yeah. Today is the last day at Lloyd's Music for me. I've been teaching here for 12 years now. Uh, I've got to be the engineer to some of his recordings. I've got to meet a lot of amazing musicians. Uh, some some even Grammy award winning musicians. I've given a lot of lessons here. Uh, I've learned a lot of lessons here. Uh, we've had a lot of good teachers that came through and they've poured into a lot of good musicians in this community. When I was 14 years old, I came in here and uh, was trying out a guitar and Phil told me to, uh, you know, just try this out here, he said. And I was always self-conscious about what I could do, about writing music and stuff. And I was trying, I keep the amp down low and I was trying to play the guitar. And Phil came over and said, oh, don't turn that up. Turn that, that's good. Did you write that? Yeah. Wow, that's good. You're a good songwriter. You should keep that up. And that was like the first real compliment that I felt was legit, you know, that encouraged me to continue to write. It encouraged me to want to do the best I can just from that one compliment. And I came in one day and uh, another day and he was like, uh, hey Billy, string up this guitar for a customer for me. I'm, I'm kind of busy. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I can barely string my guitar up and he wants me to string up someone else's guitar. And I'm stringing it up and I was so nervous. I was shaking and and I, I knew better than this, but I'm tightening the string and it popped. And I was just like, oh my God, Phil's going to kill me. But 
He didn't. He did like a father would. Ah, there's another set of strings over there. Go get them. It was too kind-hearted to scold me. It's one of the most kind people I've ever met in my life. I've hardly met anyone that had anything bad to say about Phil because he is always so good to people. If he could help in any way possible, he was he would do so. And he's talked about all of the wonderful memories he's had and how he started and what he's had to do and his struggles, his ups, his downs. Uh, he's told me a lot. And I'm honored that he entrusted me and my family here. He let my son give lessons here. He asked my wife and I to run the store while he was sick and he had broke his arm once. We ran the store for several months. Um, and it's just been such a blessing to me and my family. This store has been a, such a staple in the community for 50 years. He's installed so much into everyone's life around us. Into me, into my friends, uh, power cord and bar cord, Ben and Noah and, you know, especially Philip. He and Philip were so close and still are. It's just been an honor to be a part of it. I would have never have dreamed when I was a kid that I would have had a key to this store. And uh, that in itself was such an honor and so surreal to me. What an amazing ride and journey this has been for me. It's sad today because today marks the end of it. It's just, it's been an honor to be here. So feel for watching this. Uh, you've been like a father to me and my family. And I thank you. I mean, like I said, I, there's no there's no musician in this area that doesn't have a story about picking something up here, learning something here, meeting somebody here. This has just been such a huge part of this community for so long. So I, I applaud you, man. You've really made a, a landmark you. in this community. Thank you very much. <laughs> Phil, thank you so much for taking thank the time you. to sit thank down you. with me and right. talk to the lovely people here on the Internet. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, again, I appreciate this store more than you know. I wouldn't be playing guitar, I wouldn't be doing this YouTube channel, none of this would exist without Lloyd's music. We're going to so. try to get him to go to Hollywood, he's a natural actor. <laughs> none of this would exist without this shop right here. So on behalf of the, as of right now, 420,000 people that are subscribed to this channel, we all like to thank you because this that's channel, a lot, ain't it? that's a lot. This channel wouldn't exist without this shop right here. So okay. thank you very much. Phil. Yes, sir. So there you go, guys. A little stroll down memory lane and a bittersweet goodbye to the guitar store that made me. Honestly, it's kind of crazy to think about. Uh, but I know a lot of you guys watching this video have, have never met Phil Lloyd. I've never been there. But we all owe him a debt of thanks. Because if that little shop hadn't been there, I wouldn't have started playing guitar. I wouldn't have taken guitar lessons. I wouldn't have decided to pursue music as you know my life's work and you wouldn't be watching this without this shop so down there in the comment section please just be sure to say thank you phil lloyd for everything that he did and all the people he inspired and got gear to and gave jobs to and all the other good stuff that shop meant a whole lot to me and again it's it's phil's life work it wouldn't exist if not for that guy so be sure in the comment section to say thanks a bunch phil and thank you guys so much for watching this video. Much appreciated. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, yada, 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 all the usual YouTube stuff, you know? And if your town has a local mom and pop music store, be sure to head down there and buy a pack of strings or something, hang out, maybe meet some cool local musicians, and start making some musical memories of your own. Cheers. Just locked the doors for the last time to the to the legacy of Phil Lloyd's music mark. A lot of good memories here. Thank you so much, Phil. We love you, buddy.